Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, Joe. Yes. On, um, the unearthed Akana monk one, where it tells me the way of the Kenzo and all the different bits. It says that at third level, I gain proficiency with three martial weapons of your choice. Uh, we're on we're doing the um, doing the one from the book. From uh, Modern Kynan's Time of Foes, I believe, isn't it? I, or Volo's Guide to Monsters, one of those. I can't look at that in the Roll20, can I? No. But I sent it to you on PDF. Uh, I've got it here if you want something clarified. Yeah. What was it? Was it Modern Kynan's? Was it Xanathar's? Oh, I don't know which one it was. One sec. I've got it on my laptop, I think, somewhere. In my D and D folder. Nice. Danavar's guide to everything. Okay, uh, and it's Ken. So I spell like that. E I. Yeah, but so the uh, Unearthed Arcana is where they test like it's like it's a magazine basically where they test new things and then if once they've perfected them they go into print in one of the books. Uh, okay, so where can so? Okay, so uh, yeah, Kenzo weapons. Choose two weapons yeah. to be your Kenzo weapons. Uh, has everyone done their level up now? No. No. some ambient music on. Still need a, a small parchment with a bit of holy text on it. I've got this D&D song playing again. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, what? Like, what? Um, the path of the, um, the path. I have to stick down the same path, don't I? Whichever yeah. one I choose to start. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. It's just, it's making me select it again. Do 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 multi class one of four. What the fuck? This is even more confusing. It's D and D. I don't want a multi class, do I? No, I don't leave that. Uh, yeah, you don't want to multi-class. I think I might even ban multi-classing until level 10. Because you couldn't fuck 10. up your characters. <laughs> Eldritch Blast. <laughs> Ala. <laughs> King King. <laughs> He's quite what, what he? he was a competent um, barbarian by the end of it, although I think he only raged ever, like, twice. Hmm. Hmm. Eldritch Blast. But he was a barbarian cleric, which I looked um, up later and was told that it was a terrible multi-class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can increase two of my abilities by one. Yep. Shit. Is that that, that we only had to do this on this level, right? We didn't have to yeah. do that before. Oh, brilliant. That's really good. Uh, ooh. Yeah, you can improve two of them by one or one of them by two. I've increased my strength by two, so I was hopelessly weak as a paladin. Hmm. What, <laughs> what gives? <laughs> is it constitution that gives you better uh, HP? Yeah. Oh, I could do. Ooh. I could get. Is it eighteen that gives you four? Hang on. Oh no, it's twenty, isn't it? Uh, eighteen is good. Eighteen's four. Sixteen's three. Okay. Fourteen's two. 12 is 1. Oh, I don't know whether to do strength or constitution to get up to 4. Mm, maybe constitution, continue being a tank. A beast.
cool. That's that's helpful. That thing. I had to have a conversation with Sarah to decide what was actually going to happen this session because I was so confused about <laughs> what was that, oh. what they would actually do with you. <laughs> Don't I have a um, thing to go to? Uh, it's tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. So I can help out here. You, you could just miss it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not missing it. <laughs> You're not missing it for your dead friend. <laughs> <laughs> Come back for him later. Does um okay, strength yeah. give me uh, like more of an advantage on uh, like attack checks? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So uh, when you hit things, it uses it's um d20 plus your strength modifier plus your proficiency modifier. It depends what weapon. Yeah. If it's finesse, then it's uh, your dexterity. dexterity modifier plus your. Oh, just go health, because that's just going to be a buff every single time I level. Okay, I think I'm done. My dexterity is up now, which is good. When's the next time we get to um, give our stats a boost? Level 8. Yeah. Let it out. Yeah, so it's a wall. Might not even get there in this campaign, but like I said, the plan is to roll these characters over to the very next campaign. Have you already started planning that one? I've got a few ideas, but it's kind of it's I can't really do a lot because it's up to you. It's where your characters want to go. Ooh. That's if we're even still alive. alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has everyone finished their level up now? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, but mine didn't really work. No? No, so I had... Um... Oh, I don't know what HP I had before. <clears throat> I think I... Hmm. Hang on, I'll, I'll figure out. Carry on. I'll just try and figure out how I did it. Okay. Let's put some appropriate music on. Let's... Uh... Yeah. Last time we left off, you had delved deep under the breakfast club and into the pits of Bellinor, where you met Drake, a survivor of uh, one of the previous adventuring parties that had uh, travelled down into the pits. Uh, he gratefully accepted your healing and warned you that bandits lurked deeper into the uh, first level of the pits. Uh, unperturbed, you bravely, or perhaps foolhardily, uh, carried on down the tunnels and triggered an alarm trap, uh, alerting the bandits to your presence. Uh, the luck did not favour you, and uh, the tide turned quickly against you with uh, Creamy, and then uh, Gigantor falling. Fortunately, Creamy managed to regain some hit points due to some healing, uh, and the rest of you made your escape. But alas, Gigantor was abandoned, fallen, and surrounded by bandits. Uh, so, as you. Uh, clamour for the uh, winch to lift you back up into the uh, uh, into the breakfast club uh, Gigantor uh, I need you to make a death save okay how many are you on at the moment? I haven't rolled one yet okay um, doo -doo -doo. 19. Okay, that's a success. Uh, through 
you can hear the rushing of blood in your head, uh, and you you can't see anything. Everything is dark, and your head feels like everything is shaking. The world is tilting upside down. But somewhere in the distance, you hear voices. You can't tell if they're far away or close to you. Oh, Merrick, shall I crush? Quiet, let me think. This is disaster. We can't kill him, we need him to talk. We need to find out what that party was, why they were uh, walking in on our dealings. Um, you. Uh, search his body. Uh, so in this deep state of unconsciousness, lapsing in and out of uh, consciousness, you just barely feel uh, hands moving across your body. <laughs> Don't stop. Uh, the first voice you, the second voice you heard, speaks again. Emeryn is dead. Uh, we are leaderless. The boss won't like this at all. What am I going to tell him? Have you found anything? Uh, I just need to check that you actually have what I think you have. Well, fuck it, I'm the DM. I can say what you have. Uh, the uh, the hand reaches into one of your pockets and pulls out the oh. sigil that you keep there. Big long one. Uh, of <laughs> that big sigil. The knight's gift. <laughs> Shit, boss, we've got a problem. What what do you mean? We've already got a problem. No, he's uh he's one of us. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, wait. Wait, this could be... This could be our chance. We've not seen him around before. He can't be one of Black Crow's men. That means the boss will want to know who he's working for. He can use him. We'll take him to the boss. Come on, clear up. And as your consciousness slips away, uh, you um, you feel your body being dragged across the cold stone floor uh, and into water, shallow water. And then. Uh, a wave of dizziness comes over you, and all consciousness leaves you. So, we pick up with the rest of you uh, as the um, lever pulled um, lift cranks slowly up to the ground floor of the breakfast club, and you are suddenly bathe in the warm light and humdrum of civilization once again. What do you do? We need, we need to go back. That was an absolute shit show. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go back and save Gigantos. All my spells have been cast. Um, I think I nearly died, <laughs> <laughs> but possibly my, I'm feeling much stronger now. <laughs> Do, did my, now that uh, I feel much stronger, perhaps all my health has returned to me, I'm not sure. No, you still have injured. You still oh, be injured. No. 
No, I'm st no, I I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've gained experience, but I'm very injured. <laughs> I go to lay hand on myself. It was an experience. Can we uh can we roll hit dice for a game? You can do a short rest, yeah. Yeah. I don't know uh, what I my... in... Carry on. I don't know what my hit points were on. Oh, they returned remember. to full. I think you yeah. had like two hit points. Okay. I'll trust you. You were very, very injured. <laughs> I, I was. I wasn't too bad. I had one hit point. <laughs> Uh, Aduin pipes up from the bar. Well, that was a short uh, trip down to the pits. Uh, I see you've been beaten and bruised. Can I do you some food and perhaps some drink? Where's the uh, tall one? Oh, he's just getting some rest. <laughs> right, you are. He seems the rough and ready kind. Perhaps he's at home in the pits. Well, and yeah. anyone for some wine? Some uh, uh, we have some hog roast on. Let's get some food. And have a uh, have a short rest. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the food will set you back uh, for just some common wine and some food. It'll probably be uh, two silver pieces each. Done. I do hope that we get some some more luck. How long is a long rest? Can we just do that? Long rest no. is eight hours. And if we want to save him and get you to your thing in the morning, when is it? Yeah, it's probably um about midday now. And what time is uh, Tom? I think it starts at 1 the next day, so just 25 hours away. It's a good Gigantor die if we did it long rest. Um, you have no idea. For all you know, he might have already, he might, they might have just slit his throat. Oh yeah. I think it's a good idea to just have a long rest. <laughs> <laughs> That was oh, a we need to get disaster. back down a pit. <sighs> Just to get killed again. I'm not going to go down without any spells. <laughs> <laughs> Gigantor's our friend, I think. <laughs> he, he was our tank. He took all of our fire. fire <laughs> and now he's gone. That just means they'll be hitting us next time. Come on, we even need, faster. We need... Who's with me? <laughs> oh, I'm with you. No. I don't need that persuasion. <laughs> yes, I'll be with you unless Wade was planning on taking me to the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you, need... you guys need to listen to me. <laughs> oh, no. Jack, <laughs> <laughs> so will be fine. He's more likely to have. Healed up in eight hours after a lay down. And so will we. We need to be at our full strength. I suppose you're right. <laughs> I hope I'm right. <laughs> you can, um. You can. You don't just have to do one hit dice, you can spend all of your hit dice on recovering, Tom. Okay. I've changed my mind. <laughs> Let's just get on with it. <laughs> so are you going back down the pits? Uh, well, we need to have a bit of a rest. 
Well, you have it. You're, you have it. You're having so a short a, rest. We've had a short rest. So how many hit dice can I use in a short rest? You can use as many hit dice as you like in a short rest. Okay. Up to your limit. Which is four, I think now. Yeah. I don't think it's one per rest. Yeah, the character can spend one or more hit dice at the end of a short rest. So are you heading back down the pit? Yeah. Okay. Why the fuck not? I'll plonk you all in. <laughs> Do you recover spells on a, on a short rest? Uh, no, not unless you're a wizard. In which case you can do arcane recovery. Oh, not Wade. Oh no, yes, Wade. Wait, why has everyone uh, done hit dice? Oh, to regain hit points. Can I do that as well? Oh, you, did you not? I haven't done it, no. Oh. I did have a short rest, though. Yeah, so you can roll your hit dice four times. Yeah. So your hit die is a D8. My short so rest count as a long rest, though. Oh, so you just fully healed then. That's good. <laughs> well, it depends how long you rested for. I think you have to rest for four hours uh, to have a, sh a long rest. Yeah, how long are we talking hours. here? I think you only had a, like an hour or so up, up at the top. Okay, well, it's right. up to you. It's entirely up to you. How long do you want to stay there for? Four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just downstairs choking on my own blood. <laughs> Drink beer for four, four hours. hours. <laughs> I, I think uh, have a shorter rest, an hour. Okay. Food, recharge, go. Alright, so an I, can hour. Do, I can do hit dice four times then. Yeah. Seems good. <laughs> oh. I've only got. I've only got four hit dice. Yeah, so you can roll it four times. Perhaps we should My buy some oh, potions god. of healing. <laughs> oh god, that's not good. But what's that? 15? So I get 15 back? Yeah. To be honest, that's probably me up to full health. Oh, that's right. Right, so right. I, I'll drop you back in the pits then. Yeah. Okay, so you winch yourself down the uh, the lift and are back in the uh, the first room that uh, where the tunnel goes off to uh, Yondolin. Oh, I've changed dynamic lighting a bit so it doesn't reveal your um, the map behind you anymore, but it means that you can see the tokens easier. Nice. I can't see anything. Am I on the map? Uh, you're not on the map. Can you um, can you reveal one person to me? So at least I've got something to look at rather than oh, just yeah. pure blackness. Should we go and see that goblin and try and recruit him again to help us? Excellent idea. It's going to help. We could at least get some potions off him. Good. Oh, back again. Hello. <laughs> oh, Joe, can I cast from a scroll or something? Can I do that? That's yeah. How I did. Yes, anyone can cast a, a spell scroll. All right. Or even like a arcane one. Yeah. As long as you can oh. understand the uh, language it's written in. I see. Didn't know. But they're really expensive, aren't they? What would you like? I have a range of magical weapons, uh, magical potions. I can identify things for you. 
for a price. We don't want your pointless goods. We want you. <laughs> Persuasion. <laughs> well said, Wade. <laughs> He's magical. Cool. Well, I'm very flattered. I don't usually swing that way, but I, uh, I, I can be persuaded. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you have been persuaded, sir. Let's go. <laughs> can we step into the back room? We can have some privacy. What? No, no. I think <laughs> we, we should take it all. Of all of us together, <laughs> somewhere <laughs> in the pit. Oh, I think you misunderstood me. I'm in the, yeah, the pit. Oh, no, I, we I'm need you to save our friend. I can't. It's not good for business me getting involved. Um, I won't be coming out. I'm afraid. But well, I think you just did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a modern gnome. <laughs> <laughs> Sexuality is the grey scale. <laughs> um, Fifty shades of it. But you do look in dire need, so I will be unseasonably generous. Uh, and he reaches under the desk and pulls out two uh, uh, vials of uh, light red liquid that's faintly glowing and thumps them on the desk. There you go, laddies. Enjoy on the house. I don't know why I've taken a shine to you, but I'd, I'd <laughs> like to not see you get What are these? They're potions of minor he They're potions of healing. Oh. Okay, who wants to take those? What were they? Potions of healing. I'll take some. Uh. How much are they? Oh, they're free, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I have one, or... Yeah, How many have we got? Two. <laughs> we'll take one for, um... Gigantor as well. Keep it for him. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I'm not taking it now. It's just... Okay. Oh, uh -huh, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll put one in my inventory. It says Tavron got one and Wade. Yeah. Cool. What is it? A minor healing potion or...? Just healing. Healing oh. potion. You, it should be on the compendium, you can just drag it in. Search, uh, healing. Uh, potion of healing is under items. And it's just that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. What's it do? It regains 2d4 plus 2 hit points. How much are you selling those for? In case we wanted any more. Uh, they usually set you back 50 gold pieces. Do we have any money? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> My purse is empty. Yeah, we've got a bit. Five twenty. Okay. Should we buy a couple more? Could be worth having them. Yes, yeah, let's get some. How much would you do, do a deal for two? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How about to give you four for a hundred gold pieces? <laughs> <laughs> four more? Okay, deal. Uh, he doesn't even acknowledge that. <laughs> He, he, will. he pulls out another two on the ca on the counter. He will acknowledge it. Unarmed strike. <laughs> <laughs> you punch <Yeah>. the desk. 
<laughs> and I go, Deal. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you wanting these or not? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. That's, that's why I punched the desk and said, Deal. <laughs> I missed the desk though. Well, pleasure doing business with you. Come back soon, and in one piece, I hope. I'd like to see you, Professor Wade, later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know I was quite that uh, good at persuading people into that shame. It's uh, disgusting now. Okay, I'm off. Hey, okay, who's taking the potions? I'll take another one. Oh yeah, how many? I'll take another one, basically. Okay, I'll take one more. Oh, I've got a potion, uh, a love potion as well. I forgot about that. <laughs> can I throw, suggest... Throw that one uh, at the bandits. Can I suggest that... Uh... It might be a good idea that Tavron is takes the lead, as he can see twice as far as even the people of Dark Vision. Yeah. <laughs> can't, can't Tavron. Get out of the trump. I'm going. Don't leave us behind, I can't see a thing. This awful dungeon. Where's Creamy going? She's just standing there. <laughs> so... Uh, you're standing into the entrance to the uh, um, the catacombs again. In front of you is a pile of skulls and bones that have been neatly arranged. This is the junction where, to your left, uh, was the tripwire that alerted the uh, bandits, and to your right you found the uh, bleeding uh, body of Drake. You haven't gotten... Uh, in front of you to the north, yeah. Where do you think we should go, team? Should we head we left should... and up the stairs again, where we left Gigantor to rot? Yeah. We should see if there's any clues to where he's been or gone. Can we assist you being stealthy at all, or something? Can where we have you roll gone? stealth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're trying to creep up, then you should roll all roll stealth check. Shall I just creep up and let you lot hang back here a moment? Oh, quite other than, other than you, Kurak, because that was a very good roll. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm going to sit no, back here literally. in this well-lit room. <laughs> oh, less stealthy than me, fuck. <laughs> uh, oh. Call me when you need me. That's a dead person, isn't it? Yep, yeah, so on the stairs is the body uh, of a, let's move him across a bit, uh, a bandit and uh, the lead, the bandit captain. Can we have a look for some clues here, please? Uh, yep. Yeah. Investigation. Uh, make a, um, yeah, make an investigation check. Twenty. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very um, stealthy, but I can't see anything. So. <laughs> yes, you notice that the um, the pattern of uh, dust and sort of uh, tiny fragments of skeletal remains has been disturbed in a line moving to the north. Uh, to the west, effectively. Um, can I roll this in hindsight? Can I roll a stealth thing? Because I have no idea where anyone is. Okay. And can someone move me to where you all are? <laughs> <laughs> you, you also see. Uh, uh, roll everyone. Roll a perception check that can actually see in the dark. Yeah. Stealth. Where are you? <laughs> Coming back to find you. No. Uh, can I can I check over these right, bodies? Following? You following me? Hang on, hang on. I need to. Hey. Can, can I check these bodies, Joe? Okay, very can slowly. You one, I can only see that one block at a time. <laughs> <All right>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, make a. I'm um, just holding Wade's hand. Make a perception check. Well, actually, uh, make an investigation check, sorry. You're actively okay. searching them. Uh, yeah, so you, you find. And they're not particularly well hidden. Uh, you find a small coin purse. Uh, so the, the, the weapons they're holding, uh, the bandit captain has a... Uh, a scimitar and a dagger. Is it anything special about the scimitar or is it just a standard one? It looks like a standard, but quite a nice one. Uh, the bandit has a scimitar and a light crossbow. A much rustier and worse looking scimitar. Uh, you also find two coin purses. Uh, one has uh, 19 gold pieces in it. Oh, let's take that in line. And the other has 22 gold pieces in it. Nice. We can add that all together. I've got 89 gold now. That's cool. What's yours is mine, and what's mine is my own. Way. <laughs> so, Tavron, you see um, up ahead, just around the corner, uh, the part of the wall has collapsed here, and there is a cavern opening into another chamber. There are some stairs on our right here, and an opening in the wall. It looks like the wall has fallen into a cavern beyond. So yeah, the stairs lead down uh, to a lower level. But the um, you notice from your uh, investigations previously that the disturbance on the uh, floor lead past the stairs. Or there's some large ogre footprints heading up the stairs, but much more of the disturbance leads to this opening. I'll peek into the opening. Uh, you look down the channel of what is a... Uh, so the opening uh, is a small hole, big enough for a human, or uh, maybe larger, to squeeze through. Um, and it drops down into a sewer that runs uh, towards the southwest. Ah, oh, rats, my favourite. <laughs> Okay, I'll squeeze through. Okay. The sewer heads off into the darkness. Even extending I... even beyond your uh, dark vision. Shall I... I'm going to peer around this corner. Okay. Where are you? Well, Tavron just gone for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're uh, around the corner, the path opens onto a ledge overlooking the lower path, and there is a bridge across to some raised ground on which there is a hastily constructed camp with a, uh, embers of a fire um, and uh, some camp beds still set up. Hmm. We head in. Investigate. Uh, yeah. Finally, some light. We investigate this room. Yeah. I just realised I've been taking. I have. I've been controlling Creamy. Yeah. Maybe I've given you control of Creamy X still from last time. Yeah. Twenty-three investigation. Uh, yeah, these uh, 
so you can tell by the embers of the fire that um, it was has been doused out by uh, um, by some water, and while the embers are still hot, they left only half an hour ago, maybe. Uh, so while you were upstairs, they had uh, tore down their camp and left. Can I check inside this? Uh, that's on a lower level. So you're oh, up on the down the drop. The drop is probably 20 foot. I can do slow fall now, so I can reduce my damage. Well, reduces that damage to zero. <laughs> See you later, Kura. I can reduce the damage um, five times my monk level, so by 20. <laughs> so I can fall off anything, basically. So, uh, Tavron, you can see heading towards the north another passage lined with uh, aligned uh, ornate skeletal architecture, uh, another bit of the catacomb heading deeper to the north. Mm -hmm. Should I light a torch? Or would that be bad for stealth? It would be very bad for stealth, but you can do it. Oh, I'll let you sneak around. I think we need the <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Correct, do you want to jump down? Uh, I'm guessing we'll go down to that level at some point. Well, it depends whether we want to stay in here or go through the sewers. I think go through the sewers. And then we can investigate this later. The sewers? Yeah, follow me. I'll hold your hand again. Well, we're going back to that sewer bit. Oh, poor, poor Wade can't see in the dark. Feel like a creamy. <laughs> creamy can see in the dark, fine. Right. Yeah. Okay, right, into the sewers we go. Yeah. Where did Wade go? I'm feeling there could be a ogre. Okay. So into the sewers you go. Um, I'm just going to ping you back into the uh, map because there's not a map for this. So, you are currently under the city of uh, the city of Azeron. Uh, where is the breakfast club? Over here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, who is following the trail? I'm in front, being what, stealthy. What okay. trail is this? Uh, so you're trying to find traces of where this, these bandits went. You're the bloody detective. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't see it. <laughs> so you can either, uh, so if two of you are in the front, you can either, one of you can roll with advantage, or the other, or you can both roll, and I'll take the highest. Um, and I need you to roll. Healthy. I think it will be a nature check. Let me just have a look. You're doing some tracking. It'll be survival. It'll, def it'll be survival check. What's your survival? Two. I get an extra. All right. I'll let you do two rolls then, or an advantage. Roll. What do you reckon? I've got one, so. So I'll just roll with an advantage. Yeah. Has anyone else got more than two? What's this? On Sorry. wisdom. Survival. I've got. Uh, just one. Zero. <laughs> okay, it's me then. Wade can't even see, so. <laughs> Fourteen. Oh. Okay. 
Um, so you stumble around in the dark for a while, um, together with uh, Tavron's uh, drow dark vision, superior dark vision. Um, you manage to make a strong path, and eventually uh, you find uh, <laughs> some dislodged bricks in the side of the sewer and a partial footprint and then a little bit further on uh, some uh, cigarette ash uh, which is just faintly smouldering so you believe you're on the right path okay uh, if you're going to carry on, make another survival check. Okay. Uh, with advantage if Tavron's helping. Yeah. So, 16. Okay. Uh, you progress on deeper and darker into the sewers. Uh, there's a winding labyrinth down here, and you believe that you're going in the right trajectory. Uh, you lose the, uh, you've been tracking some partial footprints, uh, big, hefty, uh, almost puddles they are. It must have been by this uh, ogre that you saw with the bandits. Uh, but you reach a dry area and the footprints become more difficult to follow. You're about to admit defeat uh, when you round a corner and see um, a scrap of uh, a scrap of leather uh, and a couple of gold coins lying uh, glinting uh, on the mud on the mud surface so one side of them is caked in dirt but the other side is pristine and fresh I'll mm -hmm. pick those up uh, so you <laughs> believe that you're still on the right trail Okay, keep going. Okay, make another survival check with advantage. 18. You uh, go deeper into the sewers, uh, but here the ground is especially... Um, is, is, uh, is quite dry. The ground, the mud and is caked uh, the mud caking the uh, floor of the sewers is dry and cracked into polygons. Uh, and you, as you're walking across it, you're not leaving any footprints. And you you get a good way down following just a slight disturbances in the soil, uh, a few bits of cigarette ash occasionally, but uh, within 30 minutes of you following this trail, you the path the trail goes cold and you lose them. Oh. Uh, you can search for a manhole cover here to ascend or just continue into the sewers uh, trying to pick up the trail again. We can't investigate for more of a trail. No. Should we keep going? Um, why don't we see whether there's a manhole cover, just so we've got an escape route. Just see whereabouts we are. Yeah. Okay. Investigate. Uh, it would be um. Perception. Well, with that survival check, I think you would have noticed, like maybe two or three minutes ago that you went past a side chute that had a manhole cover uh, and uh, steel steps ascending, uh, steel girders ascending to the manhole. So you can retrace your path and ascend. Okay. Uh, you come up on street level uh, and you are here just to the 
west, uh, to the east, sorry, of Steel Stream in Port Flores. You've travelled a, a fair few miles underground. Oh god. <laughs> Alright. Um, what's... What's there when we poke our head out of the manhole cover? It's a bustling um, uh, port town. There's lots of people going about their business. You come up in sort of a um, down a side alley close to a few market stalls selling fish and produce. Um, you're quite close to the port authority, which is looming. Uh, to the east, and beyond that, the harbour proper. Well, I don't, I don't think an ogre would have walked past here. <laughs> Let's get back down yeah. on the sewers. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Morglaf, you regain consciousness. Mm. Uh, I need some creepy music. Uh, how about this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Least creepy music ever. Um, now playing nothing currently. This one? No, that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, this will do. <laughs> okay. Uh, you are tied to a chair. Oh. <laughs> With a note. Uh, in a dark, uh, stone-clad uh, room with no windows. Uh, you, uh, all you can see is the, em is the embers from a cigar uh, that are being, uh, pu that's being puffed at the far corner of the room. And maybe just a faint outline of a uh, silhouette of a figure, uh, a deeper shade of uh, inky black against the darkness of this room that you're in. Ah, you're awake. Good. Now, please kindly tell me why I shouldn't kill you where you stand. Uh, where am I? Oh, you've got one hit point, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> what's that creepy music playing? <laughs> Who are you? I'm an acquaintance of your employer. And why is it you want to kill me? Well, I should ask you this. Uh, I should ask you a question first. Why is it that you deemed it necessary to kill my men? They attacked us first. Well, that I can believe. But that doesn't answer the question of why I shouldn't kill you. It would be easier on all of us. Uh, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of acquaintance with my boss are you? <laughs> well, let's just say we work for the same organisation. Then you'll know I'm a very, very yeah. good and persuasive employee. 
I know that you owe him a lot of money. Money that I have. Do you now? Well, I've got a half, and uh, the, half, the other half is being gathered as we speak. You had 20 gold on you, which we have now relieved you of. Oh, you know that I was with other people. Yes, I do, and I'd like to know all about them. What are their names? Who are they working for? <laughs> and why should I tell you that? What is your name again? I, I didn't give you it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know much about my uh, companions. I do know their names, but not much else. Well, out with it. What are their names? <laughs> well, one is called <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we had a common uh, a common cause, which was to find. Uh, someone you might know. Uh, her name escapes me now. Uh, Peaches. <laughs> her name was Peaches. She owed us money. Yes. I knew that she was in debt to the organisation. Indeed. So that's how I knew Creepy. Uh, Wade, I'm sure you know of. He's been the, the bane of our lives for a number of years. Wade the Blood Current, City Investigator. Now, why were you and him in. <laughs> well, he was investigating the uh, disappearance of poachers. And of course, we just wanted to get our money back. We had a common cause. That is all. And the rest? It's a, a couple of uh, dark characters, I should say. We don't know much about them. Uh, there's one called Tavron. The only thing I know about him is he likes eating rats. Come <laughs> <laughs> um, And uh, the other is called Kurak. He's... Uh, a monk who likes to <laughs> constantly give a flurry of blows, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> but he is, uh, he's not our kind, he's, uh, I believe, lawful good. He's good at two shoes, little correct. And am I to believe that you were all just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Well, we were down here trying to uh, get money for our organisation. Or at least that's what I was doing. Well then, Gigantor. If you've taught me everything I know, everything you know, then I will... Happily send you to your maker. No. <laughs> How can I uh, get out of this sticky situation? What can I do for you? Ah, it's like music to my ears. Creepy, isn't it? Well... Running of this city is fought over between a few generals of the Knight's Gift. But no one has been a thorn in my side like White Rook. As you might now well understand, anonymity is an utmost priority for the members of the guild. 
nobody knows any of the other's identities. Mm. I am the crow. And known only as the crow. White Rook is known only as White Rook. Difficult to assassinate a man that is known only by a moniker. But that's where you come in. Okay. White Rook wants that money. And he won't exactly... Uh, collected by any old lackey. He'll send someone important that will report directly to him. I plan to place a spell upon the coin, return it to you on the understanding that you will give it to the White Rook. That's all I ask and you read may be on your way. And what else could possibly be in it for me, apart from bearing my life, of course? If you do this service for me, then I will not murder you when I take over his uh, guild operations and all of his underlings. But I might have use for you. You did, after all, kill one of my important lieutenants. Mm. And I took about 50 arrows without getting <laughs> healed, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> well then, do we have a deal? I believe we do, Mr. Crow. Well... I'm afraid I won't take your word for it. Uh, and he, uh, you see the shadow step forward uh, and he uh, puts, uh, and coming into what faint light uh, that there is uh, creeping under the door of this room, you can just see uh, past the silhouette, the slightest features of the man seems like he has slip back hair and a ponytail and a, uh, a thin beard that comes to a pronounced point and sharp features. Uh, you feel a stern but incredibly strong hand grip your chin and stroke your beard before pulling out a hair and holding it between his thumb and his index finger. I think this will ensure your loyalty. Goodbye, Mr. Marlu, until we speak again. Uh, and you see uh, him rap three times on the door uh, and it opens, revealing uh, what is quite a blinding light to you. Uh, given that you've been in this dark room for how God knows how long. Uh, but just as your eyes are adjusting to the sting of this bright light, you see the faintest uh, tr uh, trace of bespoke uh, velvet red robes uh, just trailing out the door. And you hear the voice again, cut him loose and chuck him out. Make sure he's unconscious. Uh, you hear some uh, two other figures approach him from behind as you're tied to this chair and another wallop against your uh, skull and your, uh, uh, your vision goes black. <laughs>